Welcome and welcome to my channel. This is part two in my series about Barking Abbey and St Margaret's Church. Hope you enjoy. Oh, and please don't forget like, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for when I upload a new video. Thank you. The Church, an overview. The Parish Church of St. Margaret of Ant Virgin and Martyr is a Grade 1 listed building dating back to 1215. The church is the living continuation of Barking Abbey, sharing a joint history for centuries. St. Margaret's has served the town of Barking as a center of religious worship, education, and community for eight centuries. In that time we have seen periods of unrest, the Black Death, the Reformation, the Great Plague, the Civil War, industrialization, and two world wars. Much history is contained within these walls. Looking east towards the altar you can see the Leaning Chancel, the oldest part of the church dating back to 1215. Fragments of the North Isle and parts of the South Wall also date from the 13th century. The main body of the church dates from the 14th and 15th centuries, with the bell tower the last feature to be added. The St. Margaret Centre, on the south side of the church, was officially opened by John Wayne, Bishop of Chelmsford in 1991 and commissioned by George Carey, Archbishop of Canterbury the following year. The Churchyard The churchyard and the abbey ruins have been maintained by the local authority since 1930 as an open space which contains many interesting tombs and monuments. As you enter beneath the curfew tower, you will notice the white-painted tomb of Thomas Nepton and his wife Anne. The tomb was restored in 1825 after an inspection by the worshipful company of Polters found it in an advanced state of decay. The tomb is maintained by them to this day. The connection between Barking and the worshipful company of Polters dates to the death of a Nepton in 1728. Her will left the majority of the Nepton estate, including property in the city of London, to the Polters. The money raised was to provide for the poor of the parish of Barking and the parish of St. Botolph, Aldgate. The tradition of giving alms to the elderly poor of Barking by the Polters continues to this day, and is the second longest continuous charitable distribution, second only to the monarch's distribution of Maundy money on Maundy Thursday. Scattered around the churchyard are the graves of some of the most important Barking families, Hewitt, Jackson, Leftley, Parson, Glennie, as well as Captain John Bennett. Since 2014, the Bennett tomb, to be found slightly west of the distinctive White Nepton tomb, has been listed by Historic England for its significance and design. Captain Bennett was not a native of Barking, but was born in Poole, Dorset in 1670. He followed his father, John Sr., into the Royal Navy, rising to the rank of captain by 1695, aged just 25. His final command, the HMS Lennox, a 70-gun, third-rate ship of the line, is recorded on the tombstone. The real mystery, however, lies in Bennett's last will and testament. By the standards of the time, the Bennett family were by no means poor, but the younger John Bennett did not have an extraordinarily distinguished naval career. Yet, upon his death, £500 was spent on his funeral arrangements, tomb and monument in the north aisle of the church, a vast sum. As you walk towards the St. Margaret's Centre you will notice a stone fixed to the outside wall of the chancel. It is popular with those seeking quaint epitaphs. It is in memory of Thomas More a church warden who passed away in 1670. Stay here a while, and his sad fate deplore. 
Here lies the body of one Thomas More. His name was More, but now it may be said. He is no more because he is dead. And in this place he doth lie sepultured. Primary name is thought to derive from the curfew bell, rung at the end of the day. Fire bell is a similar concept to curfew and would have been an early method of fire prevention. A bell would be rung in the evening to instruct the population of Barking to extinguish their fires before retiring to bed. On the first floor is the chapel of the Holy Rood, named for the early 12th century rood set into the west wall. The rood, depicting the crucifixion of Christ flanked by St. Mary and St. John, is believed to have originated from the abbey, and is one of only five in the country to be carved of stone. The rood had been an object of veneration for pilgrims since the early medieval period, with special indulgences being bestowed upon them. It has been heavily defaced, with the figure of Christ on the cross the most disfigured of the three carvings. It is thought that this destruction took place during the Reformation. The interior of the chapel of the Holy Rood was restored for the first time in 1955. A new altar table was added, as was other furniture including the four shields, or cartouches, in the corners of the tower. These are made of plaster and represent the arms of Barking Urban District Council, Barking Abbey, the Bishop of Chelmsford and the Archbishop of Canterbury. Earther restoration work took place between 2005 and 2006, supported financially by the Heritage Lottery Fund, the Heritage of London Trust and the London Borough of Barking and Dagenham. Looking west towards the back of the church, you will notice the ornate font which dates from the Spanish Armada, 1588, and is said to have been given to St. Margaret's by grateful sailors as a gift to God for ensuring their safe passage through the battle. Designed by Jessie Jack, daughter of arts and crafts figure George Jack. the Fisherman's Chapel, or Youth Chapel, and the South Isle. Scare beautiful examples of George Jack's work can be seen around the Fisherman's Chapel, also known as the Youth Chapel. Above the entrance to the clergy vestry you will see eight carved figurines mounted on the screen. The first statue, closest to the sanctuary, is Captain James Cook, the Royal Navy captain who was the first European to land in Australia. He married Elizabeth Batts here on the 21st of December 1762 under special license. The Cook family name died out in subsequent generations as none of the six children had families of their own. Directly above the screen door is Elizabeth Fry, the philanthropist and social reformer. A prominent Quaker, she regularly visited and gave sermons at the Friends Meeting House in North Street. Fry passed away aged 65 in Ramsgate, and her body was returned to Barking for burial. There is little to see of the Quaker burial ground in North Street, the Fry headstone having been moved to Wanstead, but her mortal remains and those of many others are still present. Walk behind the choir stalls for a better look at the remaining six figures. The first is St. Ethelberger, her inscription barely legible. She was the first abbess of Barking, appointed by her brother St. Erkenwald. St. Ethelberger was buried in the Saint's Chapel, the location of which can still be seen in the Abbey ruins. The 
remaining five figures represent fishermen, going the chapel one of its accepted names. LN the center is Saint Nicholas, the patron saint of youth, which explains the second of the chapel's dedications. He is flanked by the two biblical fishermen who became disciples, Saint James and Saint John. Casting their nets. Either side of the apostles are two modern fishermen. Dressed in the attire of the 1920s. The fisherman's window carries many nautical motifs. At the base of the window are the names and representations of the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. The middle section of the window depicts a short blue fishing boat at sea and the hive of activity around the town quay when the catch returned. LN the distance the church tower of St. Margaret's can be seen rising above the warehouses on the quay. The painting above the altar is entitled, Early in the Morning, and is painted by Reverend Alan Stewart. It depicts Jesus sitting by the Sea of Galilee after the resurrection preparing a meal for his followers. It is a striking illustration of the rich diversity of Barking and the St. Margaret's congregation in the 21st century. If you look very closely on the right-hand side, you may be able to make out a representation of the late civil rights activist Rosa Parks. The painting was given to St. Margaret's in memory of Patricia Joyce Osborne by her family in 2005 and has been displayed ever since. The North Isle The North Isle, late 15th early 16th century, is thought to have been built in three sections. The earliest section in the center was extended westward and then eastward towards the Lady Chapel. The fine timber roof, according to a long-standing local tradition, is the work of local shipwrights due to its resemblance to an upturned wooden vessel. Barking was an important fishing port for many years. A large section of this roof was damaged by fire in 1994. The subsequent repairs and restoration reused as much of the original timbers as possible with the scorch marks in some places still apparent. Facing the organ are the church wardens pews the parish of Barking originally had four church wardens, the vicar's warden, the town warden, the country warden and the Ilford warden, when Ilford became its own parish in 1830 the position of Ilford warden became obsolete. St. Margaret's have been allowed to follow the tradition of three church wardens, while many churches now have only two. The embroidered cushions on the church warden's pews were installed in 1965. Mrs. Josephine Wakeling, wife of Prebendary Dennis Wakeling, vicar of Barking, organized a group of women, plus one man, from the parish to work on the embroidery which tells the story of our church as well as our parish and those associated with it. On the church warden's cushions, you will find representations of the curfew tower, the gateway to Barking Abbey and the only part still standing, the Leet House, Barking's early courthouse demolished in 1923, Eastbury Manor House, a fine Tudor-built National Trust property in nearby Upney, and the Ilford Hospital Chapel, a leper hospital founded by Abbess Aid Lisa. The curate's pew has a depiction of Reverend Wakeley, whilst the vicar's pew depicts the first recorded vicar of Barking, Martinez. The embroidery in the fisherman's chapel contains many images taken from the fisherman's window. The chancel and sanctuary. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget like, subscribe and hit that bell for notifications for the next video. Thank you.